Hi, welcome to day eight. Um, we are in the home stretch. Like, how cool is that? So, um, you know, if you did not get a chance to join us, um, good news. We're going to keep doing this all year long. Um, so I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that next week. But, you know, if you've been following along but didn't get to actually do the detox, um, it's going to be a thing around here. So more about that later. But today I want to talk about negative self-talk and self-sabotage because it's something that comes up a lot. Um, and honestly, it's probably the biggest factor in us being able to lose weight because if we're self-sabotaging and we're struggling with a lot of negative self-talk, then, you know, we're, we're bringing ourselves down before we can even get started. Um, and a lot of us are doing it. So I learned about negative self-talk from my therapist many years ago. Um, and I, I don't have any appointments we had, not that many. And we're talking and she said, do you struggle with negative self-talk? And I was like, well, I don't know. Like no one's ever questioned me on that because who questions you on your thoughts, right? <laughs> the only one in there making everything up as you go along. And, you know, she pointed out and I was like, oh my God, yeah, I do. And realized like how just nasty I talk to myself all the time. But Part of that, too, was a lot of negative messages that I was getting from, you know, when I was wee, um, not, on, not on purpose, my parents did their best, but, you know, I just internalized a lot of things, and then I was in a very toxic relationship. Um, that didn't help, <laughs> so I was dealing with a lot. Um, and, you know, I thought that she had, like, magical powers. I was like, how did she know that? Like, how can she read my mind? Turns out a lot of us do that. She was just making a really good educated guess. Um, she was probably 95% sure that she was right when she asked me that. And so um, it's been a subject that is very dear to my heart um, because when I learned that I was doing this and really made an effort to stop, a lot of things changed for me. Um, so one of those being I got out of that really nasty toxic relationship. I listened to my therapist and she talked to me about boundaries. Didn't know what those were. I'm so glad people talk about them now. This was like 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> I love boundaries. Um, talked to me about like what intimacy is. Um, I think a lot of us don't really know about that. And talked to me about red flags and relationships. And as a result, I met my amazing husband. I love him to pieces, but if I had not done this work on myself, I would not have met him. So... That doesn't have to, have to do with sugar. It doesn't have to do with weight loss, but it does have to do with mindset and negative self-talk and self-sabotage. And so I want to talk to you all a little bit about uh, one of the exercises I do in this amazing course that I teach. It's called the Clarity Catalyst, and um, we teach it for confidence. And one of the things that we talk about uh, is our voice of judgment. And so all of us have these really judgmental thoughts in our head. They're these little gremlins that look cute and look harmless and <coughs> tell us that, you know, everything is okay because they're trying to protect us. And, you know, an example is that little voice in your head that tells you don't wear those cool polka dotted pants because people are going to laugh at you because you had an experience where somebody laughed at you for something you wore. And so then that's in there and that builds and builds and builds. And eventually those are very outdated ideas that we have of protecting us and so you know for example we <clears throat> develop these ideas as a child and then they're stuck in there until we're you know an, an adult sometimes until we're like in our until we die um and so you know what this voice of judgment is is it's telling you it's trying to protect you but a lot of times it's just holding you back and so that's that voice in your head when you go to make a change like you're gonna cut sugar out and that voice is like you can't do that you're gonna fail that's your voice of judgment. And so, you know, for people like, for people who have been chronically dieting, for example, and have failed multiple times to, to make the changes they're looking for, a lot of times we have this little voice in our head that tells us, well, you failed in the past, so you're gonna fail this time, like what's different, just don't even try. Or even worse, you start to make change, you start to make progress and get really excited, and then that voice in your head sabotages you because it's like, this is too much or no, no, you're turning into a person that's not you. And so you need to just dial it back. And we don't even realize we're saying these things to ourselves. And so, you know, these, these voices in our head, these voice of judgment, it stops us from making decisions and trying new things because it creates this false impression that anything new and anything different is too risky. Um, you know, I've read stories of people like losing 
a lot of weight and looking very different and having a really hard time handling because people treat them so differently and you know it's messed up and wrong and weird as it is it is it is reality and you know for some of those people they're like i don't want to be this person because i don't know how to be this person it was like too much change at one time and they just can't handle it anymore um or you know that the voice that says no to experimentation discovery and trailblazing you're like you're on trailblazing to keep you in your comfort zone because we're comfortable in our comfort zone but i'll i'll tell you when i took this course like i had done a lot of work on myself already i just i took it um not really knowing what it was i fell totally in love with it because it was so much of the work i had done on my own but it was condensed into eight weeks and it was like yeah i've, I've done this work this stuff is amazing but even then after all this work I'd done on myself, I realized that my comfort zone was living with a lot of anxiety because I had done it for so long. I didn't want to be that way, but I didn't know how to not be that way. And so it was just kind of where I was living. And like really picking that apart helped me make some huge just leaps and bounds in my personal development and my mental health and um, my physical health as well. And so... Um, you know, that little voice that says you can't change or mine, mine is always like, <laughs> it's just like, no, <laughs> her name is can't do Carol. <laughs> and every time I have, even now, and I, I know I can call her on it, but I'll have a new idea or get really excited about something in my business or something I want to do that I haven't done before, you know, like really create a new idea. And her, her first reaction is no. And then I have to ask her why. And she never has a good answer. And that's how I know it's her. <laughs> she just never has a good answer. Um, because that voice of judgment, it puts us down and it keeps us there. It, it, we also have, there's this term that we use in, in coaching called the critter brain. And what, what happens is why we self-sabotage. And it's that voice of judgment in there that says, this is too much change at one time. Like back to the example of, you know, losing a lot of weight or even changing the way that you eat. Um, I mean, we are very complicated creatures, right? There's just so much emotion around food and that relates to family and it relates to job, it relates to all these things. And so we try to change that one thing, even though it's going to benefit us. And a lot of times our brain puts on the brakes and then our voice of judgment comes in and is like, oh, <laughs> you can't do that. You're going to fail. <laughs> or put it off till tomorrow or, you know, whatever our voice of judgment says. And so, you know, it thinks that saving ourselves or saving us from ourselves, but what it's doing is actually sabotaging us. And, you know, it really creates this like negative emotion that keeps us stagnant and stuck where we are, even if we very badly want to make changes. Because basically when we're in this place, we're letting the voice of judgment drive the car. And what we really need is for the voice of judgment to be in the back seat, not touching the radio, not telling us where to go. Like it can ride, but it cannot tell us how, where to go and what we're doing. You can't ever get rid of it, but you can make it really small and really quiet. And so it has three parts. And so first is the inner critic. It blames, shames, criticizes, and discourages us. I wonder if that sounds familiar. <laughs> that like hits me, that hits me in the feels, y'all. Um, it judges, it compares us to others, it, puts, it put their, puts others down, it compares us to others and tells us we're not good enough, um, social media, for example. Um, and then judgment from the outside, it makes a judgment based on the group you're identified with, meaning, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a back, kind of back to that self-comparison of, you know, you're in a friend group. And what if you decide to step out of whatever the norm for that friend group is? You, you risk rejection. And then that puts on the brakes. Like it's better, sometimes you, you get in that, this thought pattern where it's better to stay stuck than to risk rejection from the people that you're with. And that goes back to kind of what I was talking about, about food and how complicated things get. And you know, fear of change, fear of the changing the way you eat because you might be rejected by your family or your friends or, you know, who, whoever it is that you're close to. If you make that change, you might be a really different person. And now, while that's probably not true, there's that fear. And the only way you find out is to do it, right? So that's where that voice of judgment holds us back. So 
I want you to do a little exercise, and this is in the notes for this video. And we do this in the Clarity Catalyst, and it's one of my favorite lessons that we do. It's, I want you to name your voice of judgment. Like, if you're not really familiar with, like, your own negative self-talk, you haven't done this work yet, I assure you, you have something in there. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> um, and so, uh, maybe a first exercise to do, is I had a client do this the other day, is... Whenever you have a negative thought, write it down. Like carry a notebook with you. Just for, do it for like a couple of days. Whenever you have a negative thought, if you can, stop and write it down. And then once you have, once you've done that for a couple of days, you're going to start to see patterns in the way, the things you say to yourself. Um, for example, I used to, and this is so, so messed up. <laughs> Never did this to anybody. I used to, when I would like drop something on the ground, I would be like, Oh my God, you're an idiot. Like, I would not say that to somebody I care about. I would certainly not say that to a good friend. I would not say it to my child. I would not say that to my husband. But some, some, somewhere in my head, it was okay to say it to myself. And so, but I had done it for so long that I didn't even know. So, track those, track those thoughts. And then you can do two things. So one, go back and take that thought and reframe it into something positive. Give yourself new language of ways to talk to yourself. Um, you know, for example, my, my, you know, you're such an idiot, I can't believe you dropped that, came, became, oops, pick that, keep going, right? Um, and then the other thing that you can do is once you, once you know these negative self thoughts, and, you know, a lot of people, when we say this, they're like, oh, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> if you already know. <laughs> Take that negative, take those negative self thoughts, and you're going to create a persona for them. And so, for example, um, you know, I have my can't do my can't do Carol, and so that's her name. What time does she wake up? Oh, she was already up. She didn't go to sleep last night. She was up worrying. What does she have for breakfast? Coffee with a little bit of bourbon in it. What is her job? She's just a mean headmistress. And what her motto is is no. <laughs> And so that's my, that's my can't do Carol. Um, and so you might have multiple, like, I think I used to have a lot of different personas that were saying a lot of different negative mean things to me, but now it's really just can't do Carol. She's always like, no. And so take these negative self thoughts, turn them in persona, into personas. Uh, like I said, give them, the, give them a name, decide what time they wake up, what they have for breakfast, what their job is, what their motto is, and then pick some pictures to go with them and make yourself a little bored. So you have all of your negative voices of judgment and then you can start talking to them because when they, once they pop up once they're when they're like oh there's no way you can kick sugar or there's no way you can consistently exercise or whatever it is you can look at her and be like you're wrong and i know you're wrong <laughs> i know who you are and i'm calling you on your bs um and it works it works wonders. Um, and then in the Clarity Catalyst, we take it one step further where we also create our voice of wisdom. We have this really beautiful meditation that goes along with it. Um, and so eventually you have your negative personas, you have your voice of wisdom, who you can look to to guide you. And then we take that and we start talking about our intuition, being mindful, being present, <coughs> and being kinder. So, excuse me. <coughs> And so that's, <coughs> I'm going to go, <laughs> and I will see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.